Uh, hello everyone, thank you for coming so early. Um, so this is about uh, the challenges of building uh, rental stores, so if you're looking for something else you're in the wrong room. Um, I've got a lot of material so I'm going to be going pretty fast. Uh, if you get dizzy, raise your hand, ask questions. Uh, I'll try to answer them quickly and we'll try to keep some time uh, at the end of the presentation, okay? Uh, about me, well, I was born in the year Drupal 610. I'm Bison Bleu on Drupal.org. I'm a site builder. Uh, um, I'm a freelance. And uh, it all started with HyperCard. Who knows HyperCard here? All right. Oh, one individual. Okay. Moving on. So the session plan. Um, so uh, basically three parts. The first part is about uh, workflow analysis, buying versus renting, and we will see that it's a very different uh, paradigm. After that, we'll be, we'll be looking at the uh, Drupal Commerce offering. If you want to do, uh, if you want to create a rental store, what's available, what is there, and uh, we'll also look at a, uh, uh, a post mortem for uh, a rental store that I did. Uh, so we'll have some uh, concrete uh, examples. Um, just a, a show of hands, who is familiar and or knows commerce? Okay, most people. All right. Um, and um, who is um, a site building? And programmers? Hardcore people? Oh. <laughs> All right, moving on. So basically, I'm going to be doing this presentation from the perspective of a site builder. So I'm a site builder, and I'm proud of being a site builder. Uh, and uh, what I do when I build sites, I usually look at contrib modules first. Uh, I do a little bit of coding, of course, but uh, I usually uh, try to find available solutions. So workflow analysis, buy versus rent. Uh, buying is uh, the most common the most common e-commerce use case. Uh, essentially, you know, when you go uh, on a website and you want to buy something, you will search, find it, add it to your cart, check out, finish, done. Uh, so it's pretty simple. And step one and two, finding and adding to the cart, you know, it uh, you can repeat that uh, a number of times, and that's usually uh, acceptable. Um, from the point of view of the store. Uh, there are a few more considerations. The store is going to uh, want to know what's the product, um, what attributes, and we will talk a little later on about attributes. Is it in stock? What's the price? Um, are there attribute price adjustment? By that I mean if you buy a t-shirt and you buy a large t-shirt, maybe there's a price adjustment because it's a large t-shirt. That's, that's an attribute. Uh, are there taxes? And I put a little star there because taxes can get very complicated, uh, especially if you sell your t-shirts to the world. <coughs> uh, who's buying? You need to know who's buying, so you will be managing customers and profiles, uh, the payment methods, uh, PayPal, credit card, uh, bitcoins, anyone? Uh, do I need to send an invoice? What kind of invoice? Is there shipping? So do I need to consider uh, managing fulfillment? Those are all considerations that uh, a buying store needs to uh, look at. Uh, let's look at the uh, renting workflow from the customer's point of view. And basically, more or less the same steps, but I've highlighted in red what's specific to rental. Uh, you know, you will search and find a product, and then you will have to select a, a rental period. So if you, if you rent a lawnmower, or whatever, um, how long do you want it for? Uh, four hours, a day, two day, you know, whatever. So that's something that you need to consider. You add it to the cart, you check out. And then, of course, there's the pickup. You need to pick up the lawnmower, whatever, and you need to return it. So that's from the uh, uh, customer's point of view. So not so common, and more or less, we've, we're, we can see that there are roughly twice as many steps as our uh, simple buying workflow. Uh, from, the, 
from the store's perspective, it gets a little more complicated. Again, in red, what's different, uh, the rental period. Uh, so what are the time units? Is there a start date? Is there a name date? Uh, what about availability of, you know, if I have four lawnmowers in my store, uh, do I have one available for you or something like that? Um, start date and the, and the booking system, the inventory, that's all, uh, those are all considerations and I've, I've put two stars to, a certain, uh, to some of those elements because they are uh, more complicated and more challenging if you want. <coughs> there will be rental period uh, price adjustments of course because if you rent something for a weekend, uh, there's a price for that. What if you rent it for two weeks or two months? Uh, the price will vary uh, according to that also. Um, moving on, five, six, payment method. Uh, I've, I've added uh, internal budget codes because the, uh, uh, the use case that I, I will be uh, presenting is basically an intranet. So they, there was no payment uh, but they needed budget code, so they needed uh, to be able to add a whole bunch of tools to the cart and then pay with a, an internal budget code. So that's, uh, that might be a consideration. And of course, uh, uh, the pickup and the return is a little more complicated from the store's perspective because, uh, you know, I need to check that the lawnmower that you're going to go away with uh, is functional uh, and um, before I hand it over and the return is again I have to receive, check the product, are there penalties, final invoice, so it's just the, the issues or the considerations keep uh, uh, piling up. So, so renting is, can be, there's a lot more to renting than you might think. Uh, other important consideration, um, adding products to the cart one item at a time usually works, but it may not cut it. Uh, a bulk at the cart functionality may be essential uh, in your case, uh, and we will see that later depending on the size of orders. Uh, a proper booking system for automatically managing inventory is uh, an important consideration. Uh, can anyone think of more considerations about uh, rental stores, things that you would have to consider, like recurring rentals, that's possible, uh, membership, what if I'm, uh, what if I'm renting, uh, you know, videos, uh, not necessarily movies, but what about teaching videos or stuff like that, you know, so there might be uh, membership, I might have to consider memberships and I might have to consider user accounts and more. So there's a lot of things there. So summing up uh, the first part, which is the uh, workflow analysis, um, renting is not like buying, definitely. Uh, the back end requirements uh, do get very rapidly uh, complex. Uh, Sure, it's like buying, there's a cart and there's a checkout process, but there's a lot more to it. Uh, it's like the tip of the iceberg. Is, uh... All right, so now that we have a, a basic sense of uh, the difference between buying and renting, uh, what can I find on Drupal? So basically, if you do a, a quick search uh, with keywords Drupal, 7 or 8, e-commerce and rental, you will find some interesting uh, results. Uh, Presto comes up pretty quickly. Presto is uh, a distribution, so it's a Drupal 8 Commerce 2.x distribution. Uh, everyone know what a distribution is. So basically, if you want, if you don't want, if you want to uh, quickly start playing with uh, a fully quote-unquote functional commerce site, uh, Presto is the way to go. Um, you can install it on sim um, simplytest.me, but uh, it has no store. So you will only see what it looks like, but you, you won't be able to play with the store. So if you want to uh, play with Presto, you're going to have to in uh, install it with Composer. That's the only way. So everyone com comfortable with Composer? 
uh, I wasn't, so it took me a while. But uh, uh, there's also uh, Easy Booking. Easy Booking is a uh, is a distribution, but it's for D7, and uh, it's basically uh, uh, geared towards uh, you know um, bed and breakfast, uh, Airbnb, uh, hotel rooms uh, management. So uh, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, and Easy Booking uses the Rooms module, uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, pretty useful also. Um, and finally, BAT. BAT is a, uh, basically, BAT is a module which is uh, wrapped around a, a PHP library, and uh, it's uh, a booking and availabil availability management tool, so it would allow me in my rental store, for example, to be able to know uh, which lawnmower is out, uh, when, it, when it's coming back, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So searching on Google, you do find things, but uh, not so easy. Uh, what about um, on Drupal.org? Uh, Drupal.org, um, I did some, just for fun, but I, I did some searches. And if you search with uh, the keyword commerce, uh, you get uh, 1,600 modules, 27 distribution, 47.x. Um, of course, it falls dramatically uh, for Drupal 8. Um, Drupal 8 represents about 30, 13% of the offering of whatever content available regarding <coughs> commerce. Uh, what if we refine to a stable release? Well, um, um, again, the modules uh, for Drupal uh, 7, there's quite a few of them, uh, distribution also, but if you go to uh, uh, Drupal 8, then it, it falls down to basically next to nothing. Uh, Drupal 8 represents 8% of the offering. Of course, that's to be, uh, uh, that's understandable. Drupal 8 is, although it's more than a year old, I mean, it's taking a lot more time to mature. It's much bigger. It has a lot of new uh, technologies in, into it. Um, so don't get too caught up with stable releases because, uh, I mean, might as well pick up bowling. It's just, you won't get anywhere. Um, you, you'll be uh, using a lot of dev versions, of course. Um, uh, Drupal Commerce 2.x just was released recently uh, as a release candidate one. Uh, make sure you take time to read uh, the project page of the module, of the distributions, explore the issue queues. Those are basic stuff, but you really have, <clears throat> if you don't do your homework, you, I mean, you're gonna get hurt. Um, again, just uh, as a reminder, when you look at the uh, uh, Drupal, um, core release, you know, uh, Drupal 837, the next patch release of Drupal 8, blah, blah, blah. And when, if you need stability and features from the widest variety, you know, Drupal 7. So if you have to build a store today, uh, I would say uh, as, a, as a site builder or if you're a, a solo kind of a shop, you know, you're a one guy or one woman shop, um, uh, Drupal 7 might be a better bet. Um, if you're really keen or you have a, a client that has, you know, deep pockets and uh, pats you on the shoulder saying, don't worry kid, we're a big company, then maybe you want to go to Drupal 8, you know, as long as you have enough time to learn all the stuff. Uh, this is a, just, a, again, a quick look, Drupal 8 Commerce 2.x releases. I just did that for my own kind of, uh, you know, okay, so just give me a, a sense of where I stand. Um, this was before release candidate one, but it gives you a, an idea of uh, what's happening. Uh, the D8 installs of commerce represent 1.3% of the 65,000 commerce installs. And this is what commerce looks like. Um, July 2014 was commerce 2.x the very first um, release uh, of the dev. Uh, it reached 60,000 installs in, uh, a year later, and it basically peaked at about 72,000 uh, last year. Okay, so that's Commerce. As comparison, uh, Commerce Kickstart, which is great for uh, Drupal 7 because it's a, 
It's a fully functional distribution that a lot of people are using to start uh, commerce shops. Um, you know, it, uh, it has peaked uh, two years ago, and its peak more or less coincides with the Drupal A development ramping up. So uh, it, it, it's kind of going down now because uh, it's, uh, it's getting less uh, input from, uh, from the folks uh, at Commerce Guys and there are, uh, it's like the, uh, a lot of the uh, developers have migrated from Kickstart to, of course, uh, Drupal 8. All right, <clears throat> so that's the basic, uh, uh, what's available um, commerce-wise. So let's look at this uh, uh, post-mortem. Uh, the objective, so, so this is a real, uh, real life client. Uh, the, the objective was to create a um, commerce kickstart to better manage equipment rental uh, internally. So this is an intranet thing, and uh, it was, uh, it's for a multinational. Uh, so basically, they have mul uh, many, 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 many productions, and they have an internal store where they rent all the tools, the stage stuff, and they, and they were doing that on Excel sheets. So they figured, okay, maybe we should uh, move to something else. Uh, the implicit objective, maybe from my perspective, was to make Drupal Commerce uh, uh, do something that it's not really made, you know, for out of the box. But all right, so the main project task, uh, task of course, import a thousand products uh, using CSVs uh, plus the images. Uh, implement a rental pricing scheme. Uh, not much information exists about that, so we had to kind of sit down draw and figure it out and also uh, they really wanted a um, to implement a one-click bulk at the cart for them it made no sense not to have that because they have orders of 60 80 90 items so you don't want to do that you know one item at a time it just makes and uh, what I mean by that is I don't mean uh, 10 quantities of product A. What I mean is product A, product B, product C. They have like 60, 90, you know, others. We'll see a little more about that. So uh, importing the 1,000 products, of course, everyone is probably familiar with Commerce Feeds uh, and uh, Feed Stamper. Uh, you, uh, everyone familiar with those modules? Yep. Uh, you will need to import twice because uh, uh, this is a, a Drupal 7 uh, project, of course. You will need to import twice because the first import, you create the product entities, the Drupal Commerce product entities. Uh, the second import, you create the uh, product displays, which are nodes. And a node can have three, four, five, six product entities. So the entities, the product entities need to exist first before uh, we create the uh, product displays. And that's what this says. Prerequisites. Of course, there are prerequisites. If you're going to import, uh, you need your product types, right? Um, and you need your product displays. Ooh, okay. And oh, well, yeah, you need CSV files too for creating both uh, entities. And the CSV files is, how do you say Pierre Angular? It's the Cornerstone. It's the cornerstone of your project. If you have a dirty CSV file and you try to use that to create your products and your product display, it's going to be hell. So you, uh, you know, I would say when the client says, oh, here's a very clean file, you look at this, two days later, you're going to have a clean file. So make sure that uh, the CSV file that you get uh, is properly um, suited is properly cleaned up. So what's, uh, and we're gonna go right now quickly to some, uh, some basic, but what's a product type? Well, the product type is the same idea as a content type. And it's a, it's a template to create specific products. Uh, there are physical products, there are digital products. Uh, of course, t-shirts, books, tools, cars, those are all physical products. Um, in the store that I'm talking about, uh, we had, I think, nine or ten different product types. And the reason for that is because different products uh, need different fields to uh, be able to uh, define them, if you want. 
Uh, and also, almost at the end of the project, the client said, oh yeah, by the way, uh, can we also make them purchase the product? Okay. Okay. So, so I had the, so I needed some product type that would be rent only, and I needed some product type that were purchase also. Anyway, digital downloads are good examples of, uh, you know, uh, uh, digital products <coughs> that you might sell. Membership, tickets, roles, whatever. Uh, events also. Um, the type of fields that you find on a product type of, are, of course, SKU, title, price, status, images, uh, and attributes. Attributes are um, very important, and we'll talk more about that. Um, Created products are all nomenclature in Commerce 1.x is a bit confusing, and when you move to 2.x, some things have changed names, so it's more confusing. But it's uh, yes. Um, I was just wondering, do you have any tools that help import these products, like that you use with the Paul? Yes, uh, I, I just spoke about that. It's uh, feeds, Commerce feeds. Okay. And we will see, uh, uh, I'm going to show a little example of how this is done. Um, so product variations, commerce product entities, those are backstore entities. By that I mean um, customers usually don't see products per se, product entities. All right, <clears throat> so importing the products, the prerequisite, what's a product display? Uh, product display is almost just another content type. Uh, it's a template again. Uh, but it has one difference, it, had, it has a, uh, a product reference field. So any, any, uh, any content type, if you add a product reference field to it, becomes all of a sudden a product display. Uh, there are also node at product display node, product reference node, product display entities. So this kind of mix of language is uh, at one point uh, it, it gets confusing. And of course, the product display is the front store, it's the using, it's the user facing entity. And here's a little bit of, uh, a, you know, graphic of how this looks. On the left, we have the store. On the right, we have the back store. So on the left, the store, that's the product display. That's also what I call the parent entity. The parent entity because you need the product display, which is a node, uh, to house the uh, product entities themselves, right? Which are the product variations. So you have a name, an image, uh, a body, uh, the, a description. Be careful because the description here applies to all your variations. So if you need a description which is specific to a product entity, you're going to have to uh, create a field at the product level and bring it in. Like, uh, let's say product specs. So product specs would be at the product level and it would show in the node display, but it would be different for every, or it could be different for every uh, variation. Is it all clear? Okay, importing products, prerequisites. So you need a good CSV file. What's a CSV file? Everyone knows what a CSV file is? Um, it's your ticket to bulk create everything. Um, product variations must have a unique SKU. That's one of the... Um, uh, so when you create your commerce product entities, the unique identifier is the SKU. So you need a SKU for every uh, entry. The preferred price for Drupal Commerce, at least in uh, 1.x, is what they call raw minor units. So the price that you will put in your CSV is not 9.99, but rather 999. Okay, we'll see an example of that. And again, you will need those two CSV files because you first create your product entities and then you create the product display node. So here's what it looks like. Um, so the first, at the top of the page, what we see is the, the first CSV that allows me to create uh, the various 
product variations. So uh, we have a, a number of columns here. We have the SKU, category, subcategory, name, price. Notice that the price, which is here, can I do a select? No. Uh, which is 137, 150. That's, uh, so that's in raw minor units. Uh, we, so we have price, we have rental price, we have length, and we could have a number of attributes. Uh, of course, you can also import images. So, and if you import images, you want a path to the image. Yes? How do you determine the SKU? Is there any? Okay, so um, SKU basically, um, it's up to you. There's no module that uh, will create SKUs automatically for you, although some, some things exist. But basically, your SKU needs to, needs to tell you what's the product. And it needs to tell you uh, what are the attributes. So if I only have one attribute, which is 4, 5, 8, 10 feet, it needs to be reflected in, the, in your SKU. If it's not reflected in your SKU, how can you tell the difference in your store between you know, like the 4 feet uh, whatever range and the 10 feet range? There's no way to do it. So basically, for every for every attribute, you need a specific SKU. So for T-shirts, if I have uh, size and color as attributes, then I need uh, something like maybe TS, and then uh, some kind of short code for the color, and a short code for the size. That's the only way to, so, but you, you're on your own to come up with the most appropriate scheme. Um, again, don't um, uh, spend some time really looking at how you want to describe your product with SKUs because once all your products are in, it's kind of difficult to change all your SKUs, you know. You can get all SKUs up. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so that's the top part. And the second CSV file, the, it's basically the same information. The only difference is because here I will be creating node, uh, product displays, all the product variations that belong to the product display appear here in a comma separated list. So that way, when the node is created, these product entities will be added to the node automatically. So that's why you need those two files. Question? All good? <coughs> uh, implementing the rental pricing scheme. Uh, this raises, uh, of course, uh, many questions. How do products and attributes play, affect one another? What are attributes? What's a good attribute? What's a bad attribute? There are skewable attributes and non-skewable attributes. So uh, size and color are skewable attributes. But uh, what if I rent a t-shirt? Do I need a separate skew if I rent it for one day or if I rent it for a week? Maybe not, right? So, um, so you need to consider that. And of course, depending on your use case, this will vary. And the big question was, should I create a standard attribute uh, to handle uh, a rental pricing scheme? Uh, of course, this will require some thinking. Uh, again, just like SKU, uh, you need to sit down, you need to, uh, you know, paper, pen, stuff, and do some models, make sure that uh, you have a good understanding of your uh, product model, your attributes, the price calculations. Um, I always like to think that a, a little paper R&D goes a long way, so, you know, don't be shy. Um, in hindsight, uh, keep it as simple as you can. Don't, don't get fancy. If you start getting fancy, it's going to bite you back at one point. Um, so about attributes, I think I can skip through this because we've, I've basically said anything. But basically, if you walk into a store and, and you say, I, I want a beautiful and original t-shirt just for me, I mean, there's no attributes for that, right? So someone's going to come and say, OK, what's your size? Uh, what's your preferred color? Yes? Uh, you were just saying, uh, 
don't get too fancy. I was just wondering if you could give an example of like how you run a t-shirt. Uh, that's a good question. Um, the answer is coming, I think. Let me know. Uh, so I'll skip through this because we got some more interesting stuff coming. Right, size, color, those are both in, uh, important attributes for a t-shirt. Um, remember, attributes can affect pricing. They don't have to, but they can. Uh, color has no effect, but size usually will. Uh, each attribute, again, requires a unique SKU, which is mostly true 99.9% .9 of the time, I would say, uh, especially if you need to uh, manage uh, uh, inventory. So um, I didn't have, uh, my shop was not a t-shirt shop, it was a tool shop, so length is a reasonable rope. Uh, if we have a rope product, then length is a reasonable uh, attribute. It's gonna affect price, right? 100 feet is different than 500 feet. If we have five options of length, that means I have to create five product variations. Then I will have five SKUs that relate to the rope, right? Oh, what if I throw width in there? That's also a reasonable uh, attribute. Um, again, you know, 16th, 1 16th of an inch versus 3 8 has a different cost. So it was most, uh, so if we need three widths, that means I'll end up with 15 product variations, right? Because I have five length, three width, and if you had 10 load capacities, then you're at 150, you know? Um, so beware of combination of attributes. Uh, they can quickly spiral out of control. Um, so that's, that, that's one answer to the question, you know, can you give me an example of, uh, you know, stay simple. Uh, beware of multiplying attributes. Try to, try to bring things. Um, okay, so uh, for the pricing scheme, basically this meant, because uh, uh, we did discuss, uh, can we have different pricing scheme depending on context, product, and quickly we said no, 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 no. You know, we need one single pricing scheme for every uh, product. Uh, it has to be a simple formula and there has to be no exceptions. So this was a, a discussion with the, with the, with the client and, and the client understood that, okay, um, maybe he wouldn't get the exact price he would like on the different objects, so he would have to adapt to a formula that we came up with and that was close to most of his um, uh, requests, but not exactly uh, dead on. So here's, wh here's what we came up with. Uh, basically, uh, on, the, um, on the left, that's what the client needed. So uh, there was a base price. So, so the one day is your base price. Uh, so, uh, it, and it will be very useful later on, you'll see. And then a week, 15 days, a month, you know, blah, blah, blah. And that's, and they also added purchase at the end. So we needed some kind of formula that can uh, account for all that. And on the, uh, on the right, you see the key value pair that ended up in the, uh, in the field. So it's basically, uh, but we will look at that. So uh, the, the simple formula was to, okay, can we have a, a unit price, start with a unit price, and we uh, kick in uh, some kind of operator, you know, is it plus, minus, is it a percent, blah, blah, blah. We need a factor, and then this will give us the, uh, the final uh, price. This is what we came up with. So if you have a unit price of $1, uh, and the operator is multiply, uh, then the key for uh, the key in the key value pair for one day is one, right? So you stay at uh, uh, the uh, one day price. And after that, it was 3.5 for a week, 10.5 for a month, all the way to, um, to 195 for a purchase. So basically, we looked at all the prices uh, of every product and we found the best way to um, um, fit, you know, uh, their prices. And the 195 for a purchase 
uh, is uh, there's no exception. So the so the client really had to figure to really figure uh, the uh, unit price very precisely so that things would work out in the end. Uh, but this but this was a big savior. I mean, uh, just um, um, having the client say, okay, you know, I'll, I'll I can live with uh, you know prices that are slightly different from what I want. Um, just, just to get that single, uh, yes. Um, I see that the formula that you have there is like multiplying. Yeah. Um, could you do something like uh, use an array? Like if you had uh, specific prices for like um, different types of product, you know what I mean? Could you use an array that has absolute values? I guess, I guess you could do. You know what I'm getting at, right? Yeah, you could do so anything so you want. Like, um, like factor, like have it linked to an array that has prices associated. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. I mean, again, my perspective was from a uh, site builder's point of view. Uh, what's available? What modules can I go get? Start using uh, that will make this work with no coding. Almost. The reason I'm asking too is like, I use Shopify. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like this way would be, uh, it would be easier to customize. It, 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 it could be, but you would have to write the module, right? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Which is fine, you know, but uh, you would have to write the module. But there's no module that, like, that no. you to No, I mean, it, there, there's very little as far as renting because it, 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 it's, um, it's not a very common use case. Yes? I think you could use a rule to modify those. You could use rules, yeah. You could do that. I mean, uh, I was looking for, again, uh, existing modules, see how they could work. You know, like, y you find a solution, and then someone says, hey, you could do that too. Yeah, you could probably do it. Maybe it would have implication elsewhere. So it's kind of a, you know, there are many ways. Uh, I mean, you know, Drupal is, uh, there's 50 ways. There's 50 ways to do the same project, so. Is that specifically just for rentals? Uh, no, but this is adapted to a rental uh, use case. Yeah. Um, so, uh, remember the question, should the rental period be a standard uh, attribute? Well, the short answer is, are you out of your mind? Uh, because um, we, you know, remember that rope, you know, uh, five length, three width, and if we have 10 um, uh, options in the rental period, that means that all of a sudden I have to create 150 product variations for my little room, you know, and that's one product out of 1,000. So makes no sense. And makes no sense also, uh, um, yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so we had to find uh, another way and uh, this uh, implementation uh, is one solution. So if you look to do this, uh, something like this in D7 right now, uh, you can do this using three modules. You need commerce product option, um, which allows you to create option sets. And these are non-skewable attribute. It's basically a non-skewable attribute. Uh, you um, it has a dependency, uh, and then you need commerce pricing attribute. Basically, uh, the um, having the choice of operator uh, it comes from commerce pricing attribute. So it, it you know you could use a plus if you want a percent. Also, uh, I use the uh, multiply and. Uh, Works pretty good. Uh, in the end, um, sorry. So that's the that's what exists now and works. <clears throat> the only issue is that uh, since the store was launched, a commerce pricing attribute is now declared obsolete. Mm -hmm. Although it's being used, uh, you know, by I don't know, 15, 1600 people. It is declared uh, 
obsolete and the two other modules are not seeing a lot of development so you could say it's fragile or you could say well you know it, it's there it's working every new commerce update does not break it fine but you know finding another solution uh, would probably make a lot of sense this is uh, another solution which was uh, essentially suggested and introduced uh, as a best practice, like two years later. Uh, it doesn't use any uh, contrib module. And basically, instead of using uh, those three modules, we simply add a field to the line item type uh, with the options that we want, and uh, it works. It works for Drupal 7, it works for Drupal 8. I, I, I tried it in Drupal 8 and you can see it. Um, in, in Drupal 7, all you need after that is a pricing rule, uh, add a pricing rule and you get what you want. Uh, in Drupal 8, uh, there's some development required. It, there's nothing available uh, off the shelf if you want. Doesn't work with Drupal. Well, it doesn't work with a rule. In Drupal 8, rule is, uh, uh, kind of behind uh, in development. It's not really available or it's only partly available. Uh, um, so let's have a quick look. This is, this is the D7 store. So it's exactly the way you, you saw it. So, uh, okay. Uh, the only thing that you're seeing here extra is this is a bulk at, at the cart form. <coughs> And the way this works, so, uh, so I can filter my products, uh, look for, uh, what am I looking for? I guess it doesn't, doesn't matter, but basically you see the rental period here is, um, um, this requires an integration, but it's there. So I could say, okay, give me this for a month. You see the price changes, and I can say, give me four of those. Um, let's go find something else. So I'm going to find something here. Uh, I need this for 120 days. The price has changed. And give me 50 of those. All right. So, I mean, we can go on and on and on and on. So barring any big issues. Uh, so if we look at our cart now, See, so we have this stage automation show control. We've got four, and the price here is the per month price, right? And we've got these uh, sensors, which cost 47, 46 per one, 120 days, and we've got 50 of those. So it works, you know, works pretty good. Um, looking at Drupal 8, so Drupal 8, uh, again, uh, I'm not sure I would do a store in Drupal 8, but uh, so I created this Drupal 8. It's pretty basic, and I created the uh, the rope that uh, we spoke about, and um, you know, so we do have those two attributes that that, that works uh, uh, in the same way. So what about the rental period? So the rental period is here. Uh, line item types became order line types. Order item. I'm sorry? Order item. Order item, sorry, thank you. Um, so it's a little more, so what I want to do is, so I created a field, rental period in here, and I can manage its display in cart right here. Save that. Go back to my product. See, now we have the rental period. And it works. Uh, does it work? No, I mean, so So what doesn't work at this time in Drupal 8 uh, is um, it affecting price. So this works, but if I do this for 60, 90 days, fine. Right, and if I look at my cart, so uh, I do see 
Right, that, that's a previous. Uh, so I do see the rope, I do see the price, uh, I do see the rental period, but the rental period here has no effect yet on the price because I did not go that far. Um, it would need some coding or maybe rules could, could help us uh, doing that. Um, so just quickly, because time flies, go back here. Yes? Does Google have the same product display versus product uh, entity? Sorry? As in Google 7, is it the same way of functioning with Google? Uh, yes, but um, so, but they, more and more they are hiding the product display because um, uh, not hiding. It, it's the products that they're more and more hiding because when you go into your product display, uh, you well because of uh, inline entity form, you know you do all your stuff in there. So it's a little clearer. Uh, they, they're trying to. So it's a, only a product entity. You deal with only a product. Entity. That's correct. But the product entity still exists and the product display, <coughs> sorry, still exists. Okay. Um, so we spoke about that. Moving on, so we did see this order. Uh, we did speak about the, so we did see the bulk at the cart uh, function. Why? Because for five line, uh, for five products, it, it's relatively easy, easy to go, okay, find them, add them to the cart. But of course, when your order has 60 or more lines, it, it just takes 30 minutes of your time. So the, the uh, uh, at the bulk at the cart, uh, is great, and the module that that does that is Commerce Add to Cart Extras. Um, so what this module does, it does everything except the rental period. The rental period column uh, is a custom integration. So basically, you have to create a custom handler and views, and then tie that field uh, to the other field. Uh, in D7. Um, because we're using commerce option, it's an option set, so we need to tie up to uh, this option set. Uh, the new way that I'm looking at, at doing this, so removing commerce option, commerce pricing attribute, putting the field on the line item, uh, then you still require the handler and views, but now you connect to uh, the line item uh, field instead of the other one. But the nice thing about that is that after doing that, you get rid of three modules which are, um, which are making your uh, uh, store fragile, if you want. Summing up. Uh, we have, so, we, so we've seen how the integration of a rental period works. Uh, watch out for attributes. I did mention that. Uh, use the same rental period for all your products and stick with that and defend it in the face of your client or you know make him or make him buy you a, a time bank you know just just for doing some fun stuff you know uh, the integration of the bulk at the card farm farm form some coding is required uh, the integration that you saw uh, is a custom integration so it's not available uh, as a module um, we have not looked at uh, booking systems uh, the most promising project from my perspective in D7 is the BAT project, so I invite you to have a look at that. Uh, the Rooms project offers a, a basic booking management for rooms, so you could look at the Rooms module and adapt it to your use case if you want, but some code, of course, is required. Uh, some R&D, and we are at the question period. All right, that's about it. Um, maybe uh, I'll just do a, a quick, uh, it's 9.54. Uh, I'll show you the uh, Presto. So this is Presto, uh, the Drupal 8 Commerce 2.x distribution. Um, uh, it, it comes with a bootstrap team. Uh, it's very, very basic. I created some dummy articles. Um, it has products and uh, they created uh, physical products and digital products, so you know I can whatever. Give me two of those, hardcover. Let's see if it works. Should check the card. There you go. So it's, you know it's pretty cool. It's pretty nice. 
Um, this is probably your quickest ticket to uh, playing with uh, Drupal 8 Commerce 2.x if, again, uh, your machine is set up with Composer, then it's just a question of, uh, of uh, installing it. Did I run into some issues? Um, you need PHP 5.6 and above. Um, and another maybe hint is uh, if you uh, install Commerce 2.x on Pantheon, uh, beware of one thing. Um, what I, um, because um, because the the uh, Drupal uh, Commerce 2.x installation via Composer brings in some some of the uh, packages have uh, hidden Git directories and hidden Travis directories and others. And if you don't remove those before committing and pushing them to Pantheon, your Pantheon site will go. You know, so. That's the only, uh, but otherwise, uh, works really nice. So, questions? Yes? Is Presto a replacement for Commerce Kickstarter? <laughs> or is there a Drupal version of Kickstarter? There's no uh, version of uh, Commerce Kickstart. And reading the various comments by the, you know, the folks from Commerce Guys, I would be surprised to see a Commerce Kickstart anytime soon because uh, commerce is uh, there's so much more work still to be done that they're not going to spend some time uh, doing that so is presto uh, done by, by no commerce no no it's someone else it's, it's an individual uh, who's uh, who's done it so okay. looks so pretty good there's a commerce space on github it's also kind of like a distribution it does most of stuff there. okay yeah okay. just search for commerce Any more questions? Ah, this is good. Thank you. Good job.